Dear friends, welcome back to Automate with Rakesh. In this video, we are going to learn a very important area, which is how would you allocate developer licenses? Let's say in your company, there are new developers who have joined and you have been asked, hey, you have admin access. Can you go ahead and assign the developer licenses to the new developers? Or you would be asked, can you revoke access of one of the developer? So for all this, you need to have the knowledge around how this developer licenses are being used or how you can manage it. So this is the video. So let's get started. For this, the very first check you must do is go to your tenant and you should be having the entire orchestrator admin access. You should go to tenant and go to license. First you see what licenses do you have? Do you have the license which is automation developer or in the older version it was RPA developer, right? The names might keep changing but again it should have the word developer. So this is the automation developer license. This would allow and the definition is written here. Access to Studio Pro, Studio, Studio X, Attended Robot, Action center, task cap. So all these options, all these accesses also you will get. So you first have to check the license that is available or not. So once you got to know, okay, I have few licenses. For example, in my account, I have got two automation developer licenses. Now I can still use one more license. So how can I do this? Let me show you. For this, you need to go to hit on tenants and click on manage access. And here you have the option manage account and groups. This is where you have to click. This will bring to user management page. Okay. So here you have users, robot, user, robot and group management page. You have to go to the users tab. You see a invite users button click on this invite users button and enter the email address of the new developer so here i would use one of my another account so i'll enter that address so i have entered that address now because he is a developer out of this group membership which are pre-built created by UiPath, this you would see all these groups would be shown. Out of this, I would be selecting automation user, administrator, citizen developer, automation developer, automation express. So I would be selecting automation developers. Automation express is another new license, which is for the citizen developers. So I would be going with the automation developers option if you see it. Now this license definitions keep on changing. So I would always recommend that you should follow the documentation that is available. So for example, automation developer. UiPA Studio is licensed with its native type of license, which means with this license, user can run, modify and debug processes. Studio can also be licensed with, and also they are saying this can also be licensed with RPA developer, RPA developer pro, test developer licenses available in version prior to 2021.10. So prior to this, so now I'm using the latest one, 2024 one. Prior to that, 2021.10, the, de the developer license was called RPA developer, RPA developer pro like that those, those licenses were there. So it is a, always a good practice to look for the documentation. So right now I'm going to select automation developers and hit on invite. Now what it would do, it is going to send an invite to the user's email address. So the user is supposed to open that and hit on accept. So let me show you how that email appears. Let me log into my another browser and here is my email. Let me try to refresh it and see if I've got this email. Okay. So I have received an email just now. It's 11:21 PM. So now you can see you are invited to join automate with Rakesh, Rakesh H7 for you. Rakeshkumarbehra gmail.com has invited you. So all this information would appear. 
and the user supposed to hit on accept invite i am opening it in a different browser so that because in the other browser i have logged into a different email account that's why so here let me set some password Okay, I think I'm happy with the password. I'm going to hit on create account. So this is the step the developer has to do on his computer after he receives the email. He has to set up password for his account. So once this is done, here you see an error. Basic authentication is disabled for this user. Sign in with single sign on. So this is the default uh, security options that are enabled. All you do, the user has to click on sign in with single sign on. After that, it will show the email address that he has logged in then you just have to say continue with whatever account it is click on this now what would happen because i have been given the automation developer user so here it is asking give it a name so i will give some name and hit on next getting it pretty simple process so once the user once the developer logs in he would find his thing something like this he clicks on it and he should find orchestrator and he can log in. Now, when he logs in as a developer, his view is restricted. For example, if you go to tenant, you can see he cannot add robots, he cannot create folders, he cannot uh, manage access. So this is only given to the admin. Now, if I log in back, just look at this. This all are grayed out. Now, if I log in back to my Chrome account, so this I have logged in with a different email address. So this is the admin email address. We cancel this and go back. Okay. So now if you see, compare it. See, I have option to do an unattended setup. I have option to add machine. So all these options are enabled as an admin for me. However, for the developer, if I go back to Chrome, you can see all these options are grayed out getting it now the next question is okay rakesh he, he is able to log into orchestrator how about his uipath assistant how he would log into uipath assistant okay so for this all you have to do you know for him to log into uipath assistant i need to allocate the license so i will go to my google browser where i have logged in as an admin with a different email address so here i will go and i have to go to manage access and the name just now I have invited Rakesh Hotmail has appeared here, right? And all you do, hit on this three dots, hit on edit. And all his options would come, right? Standard interface you will get. So you can restrict no UI access. Let's say I want to restrict access to orchestrator. I can do that. Personal workspace only. So all this restriction, we do it. By default, standard interface would be given. Standard interface means the one that I have logged in. You can see a couple of things have been blocked for me. I cannot see the licenses. I cannot see a couple of things which are blocked which not supposed to be used by the developer. Okay. However, if needed, again, I can go and add some more access for him. So how I do it? I go to personal automation setup. And here you see there are multiple options. Because he's a developer, you can either go with RPA developer. This is the older license for 2021. For the latest one, I would go with automation developer. Now, automation developer is the license. Before I allocate and update it, let me show you a few important points. If I go to tenant and license, so one user of two, that means two licenses I have got, I have consumed only 50%. Now, what I will do, you remember the path? Manage access. Come here, select that new developer, hit on edit come to personal automation setup and here I'm going to select automation developer. The moment I select, these are the accesses he would have. He would automatically gain an un, an attended robot for this user with this license, allows user to run automations on their local machine via UiPath Assistant. So by default, he's getting attended license with this, uh, access this and then run background personal remote automations in folders where the user has necessary permissions and their personal workspace. So here, what is the meaning? If you see my actual, this one has got multiple folders. 
my workspace finance hr it and shade but if i if i have logged in as a developer with a different email address i only see my workspace which is my personal workspace and the shared one these are the two folders which will be shown to the developers rest of the folders will remain hidden until unless i go to the specific folder and add them so if i go to the folder let's say i would like to add this guy so i can go to accounts and user and if i add rakesh or you have to search this and let me type rakesh so you can see hotmail if i add him personally like this and uh, the roles for the account to be selected automation developer and i'm going to assign this um, assign tenant roles now if when i added him to specific folder now if you refresh this you can see it has got it it saw another folder he, he gained access to another folder so you are learning very very granular details with a demo so this is this should be very helpful for you so please do comment if these things are helping you now the next thing where we were tenant manage access we went to the developer account hit on edit correct and here we went to personal automation setup and i supposed to select automation developer and here it is asking domain username now you should ask that developer okay i'll give you allocate the developer license for you go to your computer and open cmd your command prompt and there in the command prompt simply type who am i and hit on enter so this is the whatever that value comes you ask him to pass that to you through a ping or an email or whatever it is so once you get that machine detail all you do simply enter it domain and username and simply hit on update so what happened save successful so now this guy okay double check it you see personal automation now he has got the automation developer license now if you go back to tenant and license you see it is now 100% learning it how it is working so from the tenant pool you have given a license to someone so it is now 100% two uses of two okay after that the, what the developer has to do from his end so he is supposed to open uipath assistant okay so when he it, it will be something it will appear something like this right um, so all he has to do click on this and then hit on sign in so that would automatically redirect now what what is happening i have got two two accounts logged in, in the same computer right one is the so it, it might by default log in to uh, let me see the email so it is logging into gmail.com so what i will do let me copy this and let me sign out again okay now i'll go to that uh, edge browser because i'm doing it in the same system you know i have to try all this open and the ui with assistant sign in ah uh, this is automatically redirecting me to so what i will do let me sign out sign out from my gmail account because the uipath assistant is using the default browser of my laptop which is google chrome and in the google chrome i have already logged in right so first let me sign out now we log out i'll do a log out and sign out from this now let me try so it is asking continue with now if i hit on sign in it will ask me continue so here what i will do i'll select sign in with other account continue with microsoft i mean that's a microsoft account so i have one here so as the developer he is supposed to do that he need to sign in with his email address so once you sign in you see now rakesh hotmail right rh rakesh hotmail this is the developer email address which i have used and now i have successfully signed it did you see i have successfully signed it so all this automation that are there in the it department projects and shared folder all of this would automatically shown whatever in the folder you have seen in that whatever processes you have created all those processes would appear here okay if i go to preferences orchestrate settings you can see i have been connected but again i have logged in 
using the developer's email address. So you understood the entire process through this demo. How do you actually log in as a developer? So you can see as a developer now I have logged into my UiPath Assistant and also I have logged into the orchestrator where I have got limited access. So thank you guys for watching. If this video has helped you to learn something new, do not forget to comment and let me know in the comment section of the video. So thank you so much for watching. Let's meet every day on this channel and learn something new. Thank you.